It's that time of the year yet again. That time to drag up the hot chocolate, decorate those plastic trees, and wrap up those gifts that you got for all your family and friends. That's right, everyone. It's Christmas time again. And you know what that means, everyone? That means it's that time of the year yet again for a yearly tradition on this channel. I got some gifts for Christmas, and I'm ready to open them up and show them to you guys. Just like I do every year. Do you skip, like, two of these unboxing videos, though? Like I do every year. Yeah, I'm sure you would have if you didn't spend two years working on one review that whole time. Rayman's Oranges was really hard, okay? Hi, welcome to another Christmas unboxing video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and, uh, there, uh, uh, if you've seen the past update videos, you know why. Uh, it's just been... The, bit, bit, the Rayman review kind of distracted me from any other projects and I wanted to get that done solely and then all the other... I've gone over this many times in other update videos, I'm not going to go over it again. But, um, but, but, but it's back. I got another Christmas unboxing video for you guys. I thought it would be fun to do another one of these. Um, no Santa hat this time, unfortunately. Because I, I couldn't find it. This one's going to work out a little bit differently this time around. Because as as the we kindly pointed out. Uh, I've, I've missed at least two of these Christmas unboxing videos. And uh, I thought it'd be nice to do a little catching up. And show you what I did get across those two years. Uh, so just so we're all caught up in uh, all that good stuff. So uh, what do you say we get started? Let's start with uh, uh, what I haven't even opened yet. It's... Uh, Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. I've not played this one, and as you can see, I haven't even opened this one yet. For reasons, for, for video reasons, for, for certain projects that have yet to be uploaded, despite me uh, hinting at them, like, years ago. <coughs> but anyways, uh, I will keep this closed uh, until that time comes. But, uh, my stance on previous Lego games is that they're, they're good games. Uh, I have noticed a lot of them kind of start to follow the same general formula. And then when LEGO City came around, they kind of tried to, to spice up that formula a little bit. And then ever since LEGO City, they stuck to that formula. Especially with their open world uh, parts of the LEGO games. Uh, even going as far as to put an open world in LEGO games that really shouldn't ha have an open world to begin with. It's just there, just because. <laughs> um... And I'm guessing, I think this one might fit better with an open world, because it's, it's a superhero game. I can I can see an open world working better with this. Um, I'm hoping to maybe do a My Thoughts video of this one day. That, that was another reason why I haven't even played it yet. Uh, so I was planning on doing like a My Thoughts of it, since I did do a My Thoughts of uh, LEGO City a while back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, maybe expect that at some point. That would be cool. Alright, now let's get into some other games for new systems that I have not yet shown on this channel. That's a lot. I showed it once on a live stream. <laughs> uh, I got a PS4 recently, and by recently I mean a year ago, but um, yeah, I've been uh, holding off on a PS4 for a while because I've been waiting for games that I'm interested in to come out for it. And only enough games have built up for that system recently for me to justify going out and getting one so I can play these games that I'm interested in. And of course, right as that happens, there's already talks of a PlayStation 5. I hate you so much, Sony. But uh, with that said, here's some PS4 games I got. Final Fantasy 15. I've talked about this a couple of times in previous My Thoughts videos, both the E3 ones. I said they looked, that the game looked interesting, so therefore I went and got it. I've beaten it uh, at this point in time. It's a, it's a good game. I like it. Um, there's definitely parts of it from the original E3 demo that were not present in this one. I mean, there's like vague parts of it that are present in it, but they've definitely, it's definitely changed a lot since the demo. Like, the teleporting mechanics definitely not as cool as it looked in the trailer, because you can only do it on a set points in the world. 
Um, with that aside, though, I do like this game. I like the, uh, the four main characters. I think they work really well off of each other. Except Gladios, because he made a big, he became a big poopy butt in the final act. And I hate him, and I wish he'd apologize, but he never does. What's wrong with you? But before then, I think I did like Gladius. He's such a, he, he, he was a great guy. He was one of my favorites. And then became a poopy butt. That aside, this is a good game. And I liked it. It's also my first Final Fantasy game that I've ever played, and I think for an introduction to the series, this was a good way to get introduced to it. I, I really liked it. The combat is fun. And, uh, yeah. Story, story's, for the most part, good. There's There were a couple parts here and there where I'm like, huh? But, uh, um, day one edition? What's day, what is the day one edition? I'm just now noticing that. And why does Noctis' coat look like it's dusty? Next game that I have not opened yet. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2. Everyone's favorite game ever. If you're a lunatic. Uh, yeah, I've not played this for obvious reasons. And I really didn't even go out of my way to get it. It was just the game that came bundled with the PS4, so I just kind of have it now. Uh, I, I definitely don't have, I, I, I like Star Wars, but I have no interest in this particular game, uh, for obvious reasons, if you've kept up with the story behind this game's creation. Um, yeah, all the, all the loot box and microtransaction stuff, I don't support that at all. And I'm also just not a fan of the genre in general, it's a shooter game. I'm not really into those. Um, I'm keeping it around, because I'm considering doing a My Thoughts of this. Because if I, if, if I, if I'm not gonna, if I have no interest in playing it just for the heck of it, I might as well get some riffing material out of it. <laughs> um, we'll see what, what, what happens with this game. Maybe there'll be a My Thoughts of it in the future, where I just rip the game apart for how stupid it is. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Love you, EA. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. But wait, Game Master, didn't you go berserk over this game when it was announced? No, I didn't. I went berserk over Crash's inclusion in Skylanders. I was mildly disappointed that it was just a remake, that we were getting a remake instead of a new game. But I, I went absolutely berserk over Crash Big and Skylanders. Because I thought, because that's like the death sentence for mascot platformers everywhere. But I did decide to get it anyway. Um, even though I have, actually no, I take that back. I don't have all three games. I did not have the first one. Uh, and this is the best way to play the first game, I will say. Because I have, I played the first one on an emulator. Because there's lots of stupid things in the first game that I really don't like. And this game... For the most part fixes it. It's still the most difficult game in the series by far. But I'm glad you're able to do basic tasks like, you know, saving. That was cool, and you, and they fixed all, oh, you gotta do the whole level in one go to get all the boxes. That's done too, and they fixed that, so good job on you. All in all, this was a really good remake. Uh, it, it was really cool. I, I also did like a Twitter poll thing a while back asking if people wanted me to do a uh, walkthrough of Crash 2 on the, I almost called Reignited, on the Insane Trilogy. Um, and people seem to want to see that. Maybe I'll get around to it. That was supposed to be a thing I was supposed to work on this year, but I didn't. But maybe someday you'll see a walkthrough of one of the Crash games on this year Insane Trilogy. What do you guys think about that? Anyway, good game. Very well done. Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, another game that I've talked about in one of the previous E3 videos, uh, actually it's literally the most recent E3 video, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I said it looked really interesting and I wanted to check it out, and I did, it's pretty cool, I've beaten it so far, the combat is, uh, pretty cool, I like that there's weak points 
on the enemies now, which is a thing that's been absent from games for quite a while now. Uh, so I'm glad that that, 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 that suddenly kind of came back. Uh, I like all the uh, creature designs here with all these robots. Uh, it's cool that they're getting a little creative with that. Pretty cool. Take a shot every time I say cool. Uh, so yeah, all in all, good game. Oh, I haven't played the Frozen Wilds yet. I have it. I've not played it yet. Uh, but I will, uh, I'll definitely check that out at some point. Uh, uh, next game. You guys already know that I got this, but I might as well show it again. Uh, Spider-Man PS4. I've been really looking forward to this one for quite a while. And I've beaten it. Uh, I was, I was debating on doing like a whole live stream series on it, but I wound up not doing it and I just wound up playing it on my own time. Uh, but I've beaten it. Very great. The web swinging is fantastic. Combat is fun. Uh, the story is, is pretty good. And that's my favorite interpretation of Doc Ock so far. I won't go into it because that's spoiler to territory. But it, but it, Doc Ock's character in this is great. He's probably my favorite interpretation of the character so far. I've gotten the DLC. I've done the, I've been doing the Catwoman one so far. And I think I've almost beaten it. It says it's like 70% completed so far on the Catwoman one. Not Catwoman. Black Cat. Catwoman's a completely different series. Uh, <laughs> Black Cat. Uh, I've been doing the Black Cat DLC. Uh, and I'm almost done with that, it's like 70%. There's like way more things packed in that DLC than I expected. I was expecting like maybe like a, like a 20 to 30 minute DLC story that you could just do in like one go. But there's like side missions packed into that. It's like an entirely new story mode basically, which is pretty crazy. Um, so uh, yeah, I've been liking this so far. Uh, maybe if I'll do, maybe when I do, if I ever do a walkthrough of this, I'll, uh, go more in-depth into my thoughts, uh, on some of the other aspects of this game, but, you know, this is a, this video's gonna be long enough as it is, I'm only just now getting near the end of the PS4 section, and I haven't gotten to the new stuff yet, so, uh, uh, maybe another time, if, if I ever do a walkthrough of this game, we'll see. Next, we got Nier Automata. Uh, I've not beaten, this one I have not beaten yet. I keep saying I've beaten, I don't know, I've beaten this, I've beaten that, but I haven't beaten this one yet. From what I have played so far, it's pretty cool so far. It's kind of like a, it's, a, it's like a hack and slash with platformy. Ugh. It's getting kind of like a hack and slash beat em up uh, platforming game with like RPG elements. Uh, and from what I've played so far, it's, uh, pretty cool. It's weird to see, like, a, uh, like a triple A platforming kind of game. I know this isn't, like, a platforming first step. Hack and slash beat em up first. But even with platforming elements in it, it's, uh, rare to see that kind of gameplay nowadays in, like, new games that aren't remasters. <laughs> yeah, I've been liking it so far. Uh, it's about, it's about robots, I think. There, there's, there's ones that, this robot's like a, a human person, and then this one's like a not a human person. But then they fight each other with the pointy things, and then, I, and then, and then plot happens, I think. But, um, uh, yeah, but, uh, what I've played so far, I like this game so far. Uh, hey, we're on the last PS4 game, finally! Ratchet and Clank! for the PlayStation 4, uh, the 2016 version, that's based on the, as, as the game, uh, says, the game based on the movie, based on the game. I'm not super well versed in Ratchet and Clank, uh, I've only played them, like, here, here and there, but, uh, I, I, I played the original first Ratchet and Clank, that was good, I played the second one, that was also good. Third one was like my favorite one out of the whole trilogy. That was like the one I, had, I, I played the most. It was really fun. It was super hard for a little kid me, but I did still enjoy it. I liked the cutscenes. The cutscenes were, were, were really funny. They still are pretty funny. Uh, all of this rambling is to say I have not played this one yet. I've heard mixed things about this. I keep getting this video in my recommendations that says 
uh, that the, the, that Ratchet and Clank lost its edge or something. I've not seen that video yet, so I want to play this game for myself first and draw my own opinion, and then maybe see it and see where that person's coming from. But I don't know, like, people seem to have mixed things about it. I know people really didn't like the movie, and I can understand why, because it's literally just cut scenes from this mashed together. <laughs> uh, so I, I can definitely see why they didn't like the movie. I saw the movie first before playing this, obviously. And in that context, I liked the movie fine. But I, I'm sure the game will still be good. Uh, Ratchet and Clank's usually never bad, except that one that people didn't like so, so much. That co-op one that looked very not great. <laughs> and I'm sure I like Spine. I like the other Ratchet and Clank games. This looks more or less like a usual Ratchet and Clank game. They haven't really strayed too far from that formula. So, uh, I'm sure I like it still just fine. So, uh, we'll see when I get to playing it. Now we're gonna get to the second system that I got. I, PS4's not the only system that I got recently. I also got a Nintendo Switch, where I've gotten Breath of the Wild, that I already have on Wii U, but I bought it again, because I want to play this on the go, darn it. I'm not going to say too much about Breath of the Wild, because I'm, I, I've, I've said a while ago that I'm planning a blind, a blind playthrough of it, and that is still coming, I promise, but, uh... Uh, but from what I've played so far, I've really been, I really like Breath of the Wild, I kind of miss it. I want to go back and play more of it, uh, but I, I feel like I need to edit what I've got so far first before just letting them pile up like they have. So, uh, I do want to play more of it. I really like what I've played of this so far. Uh, would I say it's the best Zelda game in the series? I don't know yet. Uh, I feel like I need to actually beat it before I can say that. Is it a good Zelda game? I'd say so. There's still enough Zelda Zelda E things in it that I would say considers it to be a Zelda that, that you could consider it to be a Zelda game. But it's also different enough to where it's uh not like the the same thing as the other ones, for lack of a better term. Uh, I've I've just been really liking this one. This one's really fun, and I'm looking forward to playing more of it in the future. Uh, blind playthrough coming in 2023 or something. All right, next game we got we got Lego City Undercover, another game that I already have the Wii version for. But again, I'm gonna play it on the go. Darn it! I'm not gonna say too much about this either. I already have a whole review of this game on my channel. My thoughts on Lego City Undercover. If you wanna know what I think about this game, just go watch that. I'll, uh, I won't go. I won't. I won't re-explain myself. Uh. My thoughts on this game have not changed all that much. Uh, I'd still say this is a pretty good game. Uh, I, I didn't mind the driving sections as much as I did in the review. And I know I got a thing wrong where I said that you have to leave a level to get enough super bricks to continue. That was wrong. I, uh, you, the, 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 the level usually has enough super bricks to where you don't have to do that, so, oops. Uh, I, I will, I will provoke that little criticism, uh, that's no longer true. Uh, you don't have to leave the level to get enough super bricks, so, I don't find it as annoying as I did in that, re in the review back then. But aside from that, most of my other criticisms about this game are pretty much the same. My opinions on this have not changed all that much, uh, except for that one super brick thing. Aside from that, good game. If you like the Wii, Wii U version, definitely get this version. It's a lot of fun. Alright, next we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I never played the Wii U version. Uh, oh no! I just realized I forgot a game! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Wait, is this it? Uh... Oh, wait, I got more. Oh no... Oh, there was that. I forgot about that. Uh, hang on, guys. I got more. I got more. I got more. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna try to keep this short and to the point because these recap. This recap's gone on long enough, and I need to hurry it up. Spider-Man: Web of Shadows is good. Uh, I, the web circuit is really fun in that too. It's probably the best one of the uh, pre Amazing Spider-Man Spider-Man games. Or the Spider-Man 2 style Spider-Man games. It's probably the best 
and combination of the web swinging and that. Combat is really fun too. I think this is probably just the most fun combat system in the Spider-Man game, and that includes the PS4 one. The combat in this is really fun too, uh, and I really like that. The story is, is alright, from what I remember. Uh, I, I, I've been playing it on and off, and I only remember bits and pieces of the story, but from what I remembered, uh, it, it seems to be alright. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I don't even know if it had this red thing because I'm looking on the back of the box and it says this is supposed to be for, for, what is this? Oh, I thought it said The Force Awakens and I was gonna be like, what? But it's for the Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Uh, Star Wars, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I like swapped out the thing covers for it because they didn't have a, a case for Star Wars. So I just kind of swapped it out. Uh, so that might be what this red thing is for. I don't know if Web of Shadows ever got this red thing around it. But anyways, the point is this game's good and you should play it. I also got Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I don't know where that is, so I'm just gonna flash a picture of it to the side over here. I've not played that one yet, but I played a demo of the first one. And actually come to think that I did play a demo for the second one too. And I liked it, and I wanted to play the full one at some point. And now I have it, and I haven't played it yet. That's my story. I also have Splatoon 2, which I don't also don't know where that is. It's more or less Splatoon 1, but with slightly new things added to it, I guess. I don't think it really warranted a, a sequel. It could They probably could have just added that into the first one with a DLC or whatever. Probably just could have just ported Splatoon 1 onto the Switch. Because that's basically what it feels like. I haven't played Octopath, uh, the Octopath Expansion yet. Uh, I hear that's, uh... I, I don't know much about that one, honestly. Uh, but I know it's like another story mode campaign. Hopefully it'll be uh, better than the first one. The first story mode campaign in Splatoon 2. And that it's actually different. And has different things in it. And it's not just the same plot again. But for what I did play, it's Splatoon. If you like Splatoon, you'll like Splatoon 2. Um, that, I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it turned out to be that way. Splatoon 2 is alright. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is very much the same kind of deal. I've not played the first... I haven't played the original Mario Kart 8. In fact, this is the first Mario Kart that I've played ever. And I've only re I really only play it with, uh, with family members. It's like a fun multiplayer thing. Uh, that's, that's mainly why I got this, just as a fun game to play with family members and stuff. Uh, I don't play it a, a whole lot. Uh, I play it here and there. When I do play it, it's, it's a fun time. I'm not a super racing fan, racing game kind of guy. Um, but every now and again I'll, I'll, I'll check one out and kind of mess around with it. And just, 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 just have a fun time. And that's, that's pretty much this game. It, it's a fun time when I do play it. Um, nothing more, nothing less. The last, uh, old game, uh, in this recap section that lasted 40 minutes longer than it should have is Super Mario Odyssey! The most, the, uh, uh, the game that's gotten praise after praise. And I've 100%ed this game. It's the first Mario game I've ever 100%ed before. I've, Never 100% in any other Mario game besides this one. Uh, it's pretty good. A little overrated, but uh, I do. I think it's still a pretty good game. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm still in that phase where I'm trying to think about if like the amount of moons is like like overinflated, like a kind of quantity over quality in terms of moons. I'm trying to decide if the amount of moons in this game is a good thing. Or a bad thing. I'm still I still don't know where I stand on this game yet. Uh, I don't I don't think it's like the best game ever, and this is this is the new standard of 3D platformers, guys. This is every 3D platformer needs to be exactly like Mario Odyssey. If it's anything less, then it's 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 a failure, and it it it, it needs to it, it it needs to be shunned unless it lives up to the quality of Mario. Odyssey. I don't think that. I don't think that at all. Uh, uh, I, I do think this gets a little overrated. I'm not gonna lie. 
I, it's still good, and I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't have 100% of this game if I didn't enjoy it. But it's a little overrated. Just, just a little bit. Just, just a smidgen. But I think all in all, it is still a good game. Might do a walkthrough of this at some point too, now that I've actually, you know, 100%ed it. And I could actually, it'd be one heck of a long walkthrough though, but uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday. All right. The recap's done. So now that I've finished recapping all of my old games to you, let's finally get to the unboxing part of this unboxing video. The first game that I got this year that is now stuck to the other game uh, is Sonic Mania. Now, I like to preface this by saying I've never played a classic Sonic game in my life. Actually, no, I take that back. I did play the first one on an emulator for like a little bit. I didn't get super far into it, um, but it's like, alright, I guess, uh, I played, uh, uh, but this game looks like it'd be fun, and I thought I'd check it out. I should have asked for Sonic Forces too, because that was another game I wanted to check out, and then I forgot, and now I don't have it, so, yeah, that's, that makes me sad. I know the reputation of Sonic Forces is not great, but I will gladly continue my sentence. Once I've actually opened this. Oh gosh darn it, please. <sighs> Alright, let's see what we got here in this uh, interesting looking box. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Woo! What we got here, dude? The Arts of Sonic Mania. Look at this, guys. This is cool. I was expecting this. In 2016, a team of passionate developers pitched an idea for a new Sonic game to Sega. Having grown up inspi inspired by Sonic games, the idea of working on an official project seemed like an impossible dream. Until now! I'm not gonna read all of this, but uh, look at this, look at this, look, there's art and pictures. That's cool. Uh, look at Sonic, he's all happy and, 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 and cuddly. Unlike the movie one. Ah, oh, that's cool. Good, good times. Good times. Oh boy, I get to open the game again. Alright, there we go. Is there anything fancy in here? Oh, of course. Oh, wait. No, there is. Oh, that's... W wow. Okay. They put the things on this side instead of this side. That's really weird. What's this? Oh. A reminder that I don't have Sonic Forces yet. Alright, uh, there's also apparently like a... Something about a reversal... What? Well, it says something about like a reversal cover or something. Like what? 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 It includes artwork and Sega Genesis reversal, reversible cover. Yeah, see? Where's the re reversible cover, Sega? Where's my reversible cover? Now we got Epic Mickey 2! The Power of 2! I don't know if I've ever showed Epic Mickey 1 anywhere. If I did, I don't remember. But, uh, I do have Epic Mickey 1, and I was playing a walkthrough of it, like, way back when, like, towards the beginning of my channel, even. And I just never got around to it. Um, but, uh, I did, did have Epic Mickey 1. I should play it again. It's been a while since I've played it, uh, and I don't remember much about it. I feel like I should play it again to see, uh, see if it's, like, any good. But I didn't want to get this one. Uh, I know my, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I know it's like a co-op kind of game or something. With, uh, our, with our boy Oswald. Who, uh, basically only appears in this. Post, uh... Post abandonment. Yeah, I mean, it looks like an interesting game. I thought I'd check it out. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how that is. All right, the last game on on, on this uh, on this train ride. I've been going from newest to oldest. And you want to talk about old? Well, how's this on for size? SpongeBob SquarePants: Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. The only other SpongeBob console game that I did not own until now. It's the only one I never got, and it's newly wrapped, like, this is, I almost kind of don't want to open it, for this very reason. I haven't seen a, a newly wrapped PS2 game 
in like years. So uh, it makes me kind of not want to open it a little bit. But I mean, I I got I got I got to play it somehow, right? Now going into this, I knew that this game isn't great. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I remember really being really interested in getting it as a kid. I saw it in like a trailer for, I think it was on Rugrats Royal Ransom. I saw a commercial for this game and I remember really wanting to get it, get, wanting to get it at that time and I just never did. Uh, and like I said, it's the only Spongebob game I have not gotten, there we go, that I did not get. Uh, so this will round it off right here, basically. I've seen videos of this game. Uh, there's a, it, it, it's, it, it seems alright. The music sounds like it get really irritating after a while. Because it resets after every, every breath the character takes. It's like, it's like if I started talking, right, and I'm opening the unboxing video and I just stop for a second while I load my ne next line of dialogue. And then after I stop t start talking again, the music just stops. And then when I finish talking, it just resets until... Like that, you know? So, you know, it seems really irritating to, for it to do something like that. Uh, I wonder what else is in here. Oh, hey look! We also got a commercial for the Spongebob... Not Spongebob, the Jimmy Neutron uh, movie game. That I totally, that I did a walkthrough of, self-plug. Anyway, that will do it for this Christmas unboxing video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that's about everything. That's all the things that I've gotten the past two uh, Christmas, Christmases and birthdays that I didn't show because I was busy with other things. And here's some of the new stuff that I got. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little return to the Christmas unboxing videos. Uh, and, uh, I guess that'll basically do it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys in, like, six months for my next video upload. I hope I'm just joking. See you guys next time.